Hey everybody, this is Matt from TechnoX. How are you guys doing? Uh, I wanted to uh, switch gears here and do a tutorial for you. Uh, th today I'm going to make a synthesizer that I made for the song known as Racing Supercars in Japan. It is a song that I released yesterday and so far people like it. And so I wanted to basically do something where I can show you how I made at least one of the synthesizers. And I'll play this out for you so you can hear it. Okay, so the synthesizer has a very um, late 90s-ish uh, feel to it, where you've got a lot of um, trembolo effects going on. There's a, a little bit of talking going on. Without being whoops, it's not really a, a whoop song. It's more like a, a filtered sound that you would you, you would hear in like late 90s techno songs and everything like that. So I wanted to go ahead and redo this. And um, uh, first of all, of course, this uh, synthesizer is made in Massive. And Massive is a really incredible tool that I am learning right now and I figured I'd uh, take you along for the ride in learning the synthesizer and let's start by I'm going I've already got another instance of massive created here and it's basically um, uh, it's in its default position here where everything's in their default positions and we're just gonna build it one by one here so first of all let's just let's just paste all the notes that went into this line from track one on sonar to track two here and to be sure let's mute out the first massive right here and that's how we're going to start out this by playing the note now okay so it sounds pretty normal pretty pretty bland um not very interesting okay so we get through the, a lot of these um uh dynamic settings through automation that goes um hand in hand with everything so the first thing i'm going to do is i am going to set up our oscillators right now and the first oscillator we're going to keep at a square uh, saw wave here and we're going to move the position all the way to the left Right, and then we're going to drop the uh, pitch by two octaves, which is 24 steps here. Okay. All right, it's the same thing except two um, octaves lower here. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on oscillator two here. And we're going to leave it as is right here. We're going to keep it all the way to the soft wave position. If you don't know, okay, these things right here are basically your oscillators. And there are two um, ends of uh, an oscillator that you can go to from left to right. On most of these, some of these are formants, which are a little bit more complex. But these basic, one, uh, basic oscillators right here uh, are a mix between square and sauce. So when you uh, go to the right here, you're all the way to the, the saw wave right here. And then when you go to the left, you are all the way to the square wave. So with this oscillator right here, uh, we go all the way to the saw wave. And then for oscillator three, we will turn on, we will select a sine wave. So sine square and then put it all the way to the left, and um, then that will ensure that we have a saw wave down there, and we will bring the uh, tone all the way down 24 steps for two octaves. Okay, all right. So it sounds still a little bit interesting. So the next thing that I did was I ensured that um, oscillator one goes to filter one, which is this filter right here. Oscillator two also goes to filter one, and then oscillator three goes to filter two. Uh, everything goes straight into parallel, and then 
we hit our mix channel deep in the center right here, and then we've got to turn our filter two all the way up. Okay, so uh, before we handle the filter sections, we've got to handle the autom automation for the amplitude here. Um, with the amplitude of this synthesizer, it's very um, it, it's very uh, trembolo effect like which means it goes on and off. And the way I did it is I messed with the amplifier settings here. Um, essentially what I did was I turned down the amplifiers so they are almost all the way down for most of the synthesizers as such. And then I turned my sine wave all the way down. All right, okay. So, and the way then that I handle the uh, difference of uh, the the loudness during the the note plays here is I changed the LFO eight here in the oscillator bin right here, so I click the eight LFO and then in this drop down menu right here I select stepper. Okay, all right. So uh, stepper is basically a thing that you can do that, that you can program automation with. You can handle things like notes and you can handle uh, things like um, uh, loudness or difference differences of uh, filters. And I'll show you how real quick. Uh, before that, though, we are going to set our values for oscillator 8, or st uh, step 8 in this case. So we're going to basically go full on here, a little bit lower than half here, not so full on on step 3. Uh, we're going to go back down here and uh, a little bit more than half on step five, almost zero on step six. We're gonna go all the way up on step seven, uh, a little bit there, and then a little bit there, and then all the way out to zero here, a little bit more than half on step 11, zero, and then all the way up on step 13, and then 15 gets about, a little bit more than half here. Okay, those are the notes. And then to be able to make this to work right, we also have to set our rate here. We're gonna sync it up and then we're gonna bring our rate all the way to 1 32nd in our ratio here. Uh, we're gonna leave this as it is. Its position is going to be checked. Also, we're gonna check the restart here. So whenever we hit a new, ro hit a new note, this whole thing restarts again. So in order to utilize this step thing that we just uh, programmed, all I have to do is drag and drop right here. So we're gonna drag all this. We're going to um, do that. Um, all right, so the way we handle this is I'm gonna bring this almost to the three o'clock position here. And um, these are not gonna have so much of an extreme difference here, um, except for this one, because we don't go all the way down to zero with these uh, oscillators right here. So let's hit our space bar and see how it sounds like that. Okay, so right now we have the um, volumes exactly where we want it to be. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to use uh, another step filter for uh, our uh, filters, which we're going to be utilizing later on. So basically with that, we want to set up number seven right here into a stepper. And uh, this time we're going to opt for a 1 16th pattern here. We don't have to set much. We'll set the stepper step one here the step one two here three we're gonna go all the way up for four um okay we set these three here it's gonna be a little bit more for step eight um a little bit less for step nine a little bit more for step uh ten um a little bit less for step eleven we're going to go a little bit more for step 12, and then we're going to get a little bit more for step 13, bring it all the way down, almost all the way down for step 14, 
15 gets almost all the way up, and then we're going to roll it off a little bit with step 16. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to admit that a lot of times I hit this random button right here, and it will randomize the pattern that you get down here. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I'm not sure. I have, I've actually forgotten whether or not I utilized a preset path, but this is what I ended up at the end. Okay, so before we actually drag and drop that, we're going to handle our filter section now. Okay, so my filter section basically consists of a high-pass two-pole filter. That means it filters out all the lower frequencies uh, below the threshold, and it, um, it lets the high frequencies pass, hence it's like a high-pass filter. And I'm going to set my resonance up a little bit more, and then I'm going to put my cutoff frequency my, uh, right here, at the three o'clock position, all right? And uh, of course, uh, the oscillators that are routed through uh, filter one are oscillator one and oscillator two. And then um, I'm going to set filter two in, in, a, in a low pass mode because this right here is basically the, the base setting of um, my, uh, my synthesizer, sometimes I, but I like to include the sine base on here. Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes I have to opt for uh, a separate sine wave in another synthesizer. But we included this for, for this setting right here. Um, in any case, uh, I chose a low pass four pole filter. Uh, I kept the resonance and the cutoff as is to basically get rid of all the high, high end frequencies that I didn't want. Okay, so, all right, now that we've got that set, the thing that I affected the most is the first filter, the high pass filter, and that's what basically gives us our formant sound or our, our human sound to this whole thing. And this is basically a trick that they, I think they utilized back in the 90s to get this kind of sound. But we're going to basically bring the automation uh, about to like 1 to 2 o'clock position on this knob right here. So you can see, you can hear that there is like that dripping uh, vocal sound going on. Uh, Okay, so the other thing that I did do on this synthesizer, and I'm, I'm going to have to go back and check this out. I wrote a lot of notes on my phone, but I don't think I actually checked out what I did with the LFO. Because I did have LFO 7 here, and 6 as well. So 6 was basically a ratio of 4 to 1 um, uh, sine wave that I was... And it's also um, a sine wave that is kind of mixed in with this... Um, a triangle wave here. So basically it's a mix between the two. Once again, I've got the positions synced up and restart. So it restarts every time I restart a note. So let's go back and put that into our LFO here. Um, once again, we'll sync it up. Uh, we'll change the ratio to a four to one. This is basically four whole notes uh, that the sine wave will basically last under. And then we will, um, we, we don't need it to do anything else on this sine wave. So we'll drag and drop this guy right here. And then we're going to basically opt for an opposite direction just to kind of make things interesting. So this um, subtle shift at the slow rate kind of keeps the, um, uh, the formant a little bit more interesting. <laughs> Okay, um, the, the, the next thing I'm going to mess with are the, the uh, modulation oscillators, which is this section right here. Uh, basically, these oscillators are injection in, in, injected into the mix uh, to other oscillators to uh, uh, modify the sound a little bit. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the pitch to 7. And it sounds weird, but it actually works 
to um, bring a different element into the, the synthesizer, make it a little bit more um, uh, uh, interesting. So we're going to turn that on. We're going to route the uh, uh, oscillator, the modulation oscillator to oscillator number one. And we're going to also route it to the frequency, the phase modulation into uh, oscillator two. And then once we get that, we'll go back down to the ring modulation here and set it down to about the nine o'clock position. And um, once again, I'm gonna have to reference the, uh, the previous one. So let's go back here. <clears throat> and then if you'll see, I have got a uh, phase modulation going all the way down, but we're going to uh, automate it once again with stepper number seven. So let's go ahead and, and do that right now. This so is going into the phase modulation here, bring it almost all the way down, and we're gonna bring the step into the slot here, the minus slot here, and bring the uh, automation all the way, almost up to like the one o'clock position. Okay, all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to affect the stereo portion of this whole thing. Uh, I don't have to do anything with the um, uh, the envelope. The envelope is as is. It's basically a, a standard ADSR with an attack and a release and the sustain all the way up. So it's pretty simple. Nothing really needs to be done there. We're going to go into the voicing now. And as you can see, there's different things that you can do with it. Uh, the voicing basically adds uh, the three dimensional, the stereo dimensional aspect to the synthesizer and makes it so it's not a mono synthesizer. It's basically the same as like adding two or three um, uh, oscillators at once and detuning them slightly and then panning them left to right. We're basically doing that, but in a different way. So we're going to bring the max down here to four, the max number of uh, voicings here. And we're going to bring the unison here to four as well. All right. Okay. Um, we are also going to turn on the pitch cutoff here the wave and the, we're also going to turn on the pan position here okay so uh the one thing that i've seen on the internet when dealing with massive uh, synthesizers is when you want to do the pitch cutoff um you want to first bring it all the way up here so it's going to sound like utter garbage when you when you get through here <laughs> But then what you want to do is to be able to exert a little bit more of a fine control of where your pitch cutoff might be, you're going to actually drag this guy down to a very, very low value, such as 0.10. Sweet. All right. So, um, uh, and that's where I left it. That's where I felt it was the best. If you want, you can mess around with the settings from here to bring it to a more precise value between 0 0.0 and 0 0.10. Okay. Uh, my wavetable position, I didn't see much of a difference in sound on here, but I brought it almost all the way to the right here. And then I brought my stereo spread a little bit farther in to kind of keep it in control and not be so crazy. <laughs> Okay, all right. So uh, the other thing I have to basically show you is the routing. And it's basically, there's not very many options here, but you can choose exactly where your effects go, your inserts right here. So these inserts goes and goes into one of uh, various positions here, depending on what you select. Uh, you cannot have these inserts in more than one place at a time. So just kind of consider that when uh, operating this instrument. But uh, in any case, the only thing that I'm going to affect here is 
I, I'm going to put in a clip in uh, insert number one. So we're going to turn on insert number one, and then we're going into a hard clipper, which is that basically that clip. We're bringing the wet dry all the way down to about 10 o'clock here and the drive all the way to about two o'clock here. <laughs> Okay, all right, so the next thing um, I did, I utilize uh, pretty much almost everything on the synthesizer, and that includes a wet, uh, the effects here. I have uh, a C-tube here um, to bring in a little bit more warmth, a classic tube, and I brought the wet-dry all about to 10 o'clock here. <laughs> Uh, there was no effect here, but we do have an EQ. And let's take a look at the settings that we did here because that's one of the things that I forgot to, to record on my phone here. Um, all right, so we have a low shelf all the way down the middle. We have the boost frequency a little bit high, uh, boost a little bit higher with the frequency down the middle and the high shelf at the two o'clock position. So let's basically set that up. Okay, turning it on, a little bit of boost there, frequency there, and then uh, the high shelf right there. Okay, all right, so uh, uh, it sounds a little bit like doo-doo uh, oh, right now, but uh, that's where the after effects kind of come in with this synthesizer. And we uh, rein it in uh, with First of all, a compressor. As you can see, I've got a compressor on this guy that kind of keeps it in check. Uh, we've got the threshold all the way down to 18. So we're gonna basically kind of mimic what we did over here. And we've got different effects with uh, sonar here. Even as old as it is, we've got our options set for us. Uh, so basically, I modified the filter here. So the threshold is at negative 29 dB. All right, um, the ratio is about 16 to one. We'll keep it right there. We've got a knee of about six dB right here. So not much of a knee, but it's, uh, it's there. Oh, look, okay, I messed up on the threshold here. So look at all the way to 29 instead of 20. We'll bring it up so it's a little bit louder. So it's not quite as overpowering. So that's the first set, uh, effect that I put on to it. And then, okay, so the second effect. Um, all right, so the, th the other thing that I did, obviously, is I put the slider all the way down to 12... Uh, 12 uh, decibels to bring it in, um, in in check here. And you may think that that's uh, pretty extreme, but uh, when I add in the isotope ozone, it tends to bring everything back up. So it like the negative 12 dB was necessary to kind of combat a little bit what the isotope does. Um, it does, for the most part, isotope makes everything sound better. But if you're not careful, careful, you can basically overpower everything. And when I was first going with isotope ozone, a lot of the comments were that this, this thing was very, very loud to deal with and everything. Um, and the other thing that I found out uh, when I was like building this instrument is that um, I had to build a separate sine wave, and I, and I wanted to filter like the bass frequencies out of this in order to not hide the the kick drum for for this mix. So I ended up basically filtering out the the the, the noise here, the the lower frequencies. So let, let's go back here. Uh, we have a sharp valve frequent uh, uh, filter here, um, a cutoff of about uh, nine o'clock res, res all the way up, uh, envelope peak all the way up, attack all the way down, and the mix to uh, it, it wasn't mixed all all that. Uh, much, but it was enough to bring the, the, the frequency is out. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let me go into audio. I have a lot of 
effects here, but our effect effects are up here. Effectrics. Effectrics. Okay, so we'll go through our filter. Basically have a straight line there, so it's activated all the time. Go into our filter section here and select the sharp vowel here. Make sure our filter is all the way here. Our attack is a little bit less. Um, and then we'll mix it to the left. Okay, all right, so. The last thing that I did on this track without going into Effectrix is basically the, well, I didn't really do anything. I guess that's the effect. <laughs> All right, so basically um, the next thing that I did was I mastered it. And um, with the mastering, it depends on what else is in your track. The mastering basically is the process of making the instrument do what you want it to do in the context of everything else that's in your mix. So I won't go into that, but um, this is the final sound for it. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, let me know. Let me know if you want me to do more of this kind of thing. So All right, thank you very much. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll probably c come up with another song during the weekend or maybe tomorrow on Friday. But uh, I'm going to go to bed. I stayed up until 3 a.m. doing that last song last night. So I'm going to go to sleep really quickly. Again, thank you.